the sports books. The Steelers began the day yesterday at minus 150 to win the AFC North ahead of Baltimore. According to ESPN bet that has now flipped after the game. The Ravens go to minus 155. They're the favorites jumping Pittsburgh. What you see now has plus odds. Do you buy it? I know this. This is I've, I've got my Steeler and I've got my Raven. So I, I, I know that it pains you to say it. But right now, if you were to log on to ESPN bet and make that bet, RC, who do you think? I'm not wins? telling you who I'm betting for. Who do you Greedy. think wins that division? You know what? I, I, I think I picked the Baltimore Ravens. I picked the Baltimore Ravens before this season. And when you thought about the way the Pittsburgh Steelers had to finish this season from a scheduling yeah. standpoint, and Bart understands this more than most, it doesn't matter that it's the Cleveland Browns. It doesn't matter that the Cincinnati Bengals are struggling. It's difficult to go through that gauntlet. It starts to feel like the SEC, where even Vandy this year can knock you off. And so for the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that's still trying to find themselves offensively, especially in the red zone, I believe it's the Baltimore Ravens, which to me, the best player in football, Lamar Jackson. But um, using your math, RC, uh, we would have to say maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers because we anticipate that the Ravens are playing a much better team this week and they're going out yep. west. You talk about the Stiller effect. We always did that Stiller effect, too. We knew that we would be wounded and going out to, 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 to Los Angeles. We should anticipate that maybe the Ravens may lose to a really good football team. Bro, who are know. we right now? What I don't are know. we doing? I don't know. I, I, What's I, I going on? Idea. This is know. the bizarre world <laughs> in which if RC is talking up the Ravens and Bart is talking up the <laughs> Steelers and cats and dogs are playing together. I don't know what's going on. Who's going to win that division, Annabaum? It's the Steelers. And let me tell Thank you why. You, because of Bart's lack of defense. And look, at the end of the day, the you have to get off the field. And they can't get off the field. Their secondary hasn't gotten better. And again, post-trade deadline, you say, how does a team get better? And when I look at the Ravens, I'm hard-pressed to see how this Raven defense, we're, ta we're third week in November here, guys. By this point, it hasn't gotten better, and I don't see how it will. What do you say, Dan? I, I mean, look, the odds are what they are. Like, if you if you like the Ravens, I hope you got them yesterday. Uh, but the, I, I think I think the fact that Pittsburgh beat them head to head matters an awful lot. And yeah. you see what the Ravens are doing right now. Uh, it, it, they're kind of trending the wrong way. They have another tough game this week, right? They have the Monday night against the Chargers, uh, brother versus brother. So yeah, I, I think I would favor the Steelers at this point, but. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know that I, I think trust the, the hold up offensively. They just they have the cushion. That's the whole thing. They have a yeah. little bit of a cushion. And I know you like sneaky big stuff, big news and things like that. I think the Tre'Davious White trade is something that sort of went under the radar. When you look at when you look at the game from last week, he only played a select few plays, but they tried to beat him deep in the end zone with George Pickens. He has a huge break up there. Brandon Stevens is a huge liability mm -hmm. to this team in the secondary, and Tre'Davious White could be replacing him if yeah. he's close to what he used to be. Right. That'll be big. One, one thing, though, there is like three team, three rule, which is basically if Buffalo has given up on him and the Rams have given up on him, how much does he have left? Yeah. Well, well, thanks for bringing me back because now the hate had brought me back to defend my <laughs> Baltimore Ravens. I was down there this week and I talked to Arthur Millette, and he said they're starting to figure some things out. You know, they have a young. Um, Zach Orr is a young coordinator. He's yeah. starting to figure some things out, and they're starting to go. Remember, that's still the number one offense in football, so they can win by outscoring you, too. To me, it's less Thank the conversation about which team do we think is better. I, I think we think the Ravens are oh, better. Yeah. Yeah. The question yeah, is, so who's going to win right. more? Can, the Ravens just haven't done all they need to do. RC, let's go down. Yes, We're going to do RC's Game Breakers as we look ahead to what should be a very see, and I, interesting And week. I know everybody thought I was going to pick all these obvious Game Breakers. <laughs> well, one of the guys is. Okay, <laughs> let's do some less obvious ones. Yeah. We're going to pick a game breaker from each of these big yes. three games this weekend. Let's start with 49ers and Packers. Okay, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but my game breaker for the 49ers is somebody that you would expect. It's Christian McCaffrey, but Christian McCaffrey hasn't been the same guy he was before the injury. We watched him against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They used him in the past game. Tampa Bay matched him up with guys like Levante David at the linebacker position, but we saw the Seattle Seahawks, and what they did was use Witherspoon. They used love on Christian McCaffrey. How will he affect this game against the Green Bay Packers, which have trouble with Quay Walker and that linebacker crew, not only covering tight ends, but covering running backs, and especially with George Kittle banged up, we need to see CMC turn back into the guy he was before the injury. Yeah, and that team is just so decimated by injury in general, they need a big game from him. We just talked about Monday night, Ravens, Chargers, who's the player? I'm going to go with Lad. Don't comp 
me to Wes Welker McConkie. I'm tired of hearing people say Wes Welker. I'm tired of hearing people say Julian Edelman. Lad McConkie was a dog at Georgia. And if you can be a dog in the SEC, you can be a dog anywhere. He made huge plays last week against the Cincinnati Bengals in the most important moments. And this is one of them right here, beating them to the corner, catching a football to set up J.K. Dobbins for the touchdown. Lad McConkie reminds me of Emmanuel Sanders, who played with us at the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's a guy quick, in and out of cuts. He also has the speed to beat you deep. And if I hear Wes Welker one more time, I'm going to break this freaking iPad. Okay, so we've got McCaffrey, we got McConkie, and now we have the Eagles and Rams. Who's the game breaker? Now, this is going to be sneaky. I know you're going to think I'm going to go offense. You're going to think Saquon. Uh-huh. You're going to think A.J. Brown. No, I'm going with Quinion Mitchell, mm-hmm. the draft pick, the first round corner that they picked. And what he's done the entire year is absolutely shut things down. So much so, Greeny, teams aren't really going his way. So what I want to see is, are you going to match him up against Cooper Cup? Is he going to be matched up against Puka Nakua? We know how reliant Matthew Stafford is on his star wide receivers. I believe that this guy is a big reason why the defense is playing extremely well, and it's his play that's elevated this entire team, in my opinion. 100%. I mean, going back to the first month of the season, the rookies on that defense, Mitchell and DeGene, and all of the Reds, a huge part of the reason why they've been so hot. But then, of course, there is the acquisition of Saquon Barkley, which has been a major factor. And in fact, on his podcast with his brother, your guy Jason Kelsey was making the pitch that Saquon should be MVP. There can absolutely be a case made for Saquon Barkley this year in the way he's playing and how he has elevated the offense. I think it's a very good argument that he is the most valuable component to a team uh, this season, there's a lot of people saying like, you know, because of the tush push, he's missing out on a lot of touchdowns. Anybody that's taken touchdowns away from Saquon Barkley, like that's making him less valuable. I think shouldn't even be allowed to, you know, choose who an MVP is. The MVP has become a quarterback award. We yeah. were looking up the odds this morning. The fate, you have to go a ways down the list before you get to a player who's not a quarterback. But I will ask you this question as someone who understands football, not someone who understands the way people tend to vote. Yes. Someone who understands football, should Saquon be high in the MVP conversation? I think he should be in the conversation, but ultimately we know it goes to a quarterback. You know, but you look at what he's done, his effect. He's ba- basically calmed down Jalen Hurts and created so much space on the football field, horizontally and vertically, because his ability to run the football and be dynamic and get explosive from just handing the ball off. And he's a closer. So now, you know, you have the space with, you know, behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. I think you'll make the same argument for Derrick Henry. And they're in a battle for who's going to lead the league in rushing. I think ultimately they become the offensive player of the year. We know that the MVP goes to a QB. Look, I mean, last year this team was somewhere close to where it is right now, and it just sort of fell off a cliff. Are we worried, Dan Graziano, that that could happen again? No. And the reason is that they're significantly better than they were this time last year on defense. Yes. They're about the same on offense. Through week 11 last year, the Eagles' offensive EPA was 54. Right now, it's 49. Through week 11 last year, their defensive EPA was minus 1.49. Now it's plus 35. It's not Saquon Barkley. That's a self-fulfilling prophecy. He's great. He's done great things for them. But their offense was just fine at this point last year. And their defense was miserable, and that's and that ended up being what cost them their season. I see it differently, and here's why I think Barkley's made a big difference: is they rush the ball more than any team, bringing 49.9 percent, literally 50-50. They have more rushing attempts. That allows them to control the game, and their defense is better, and it's improving. And RC, as you mentioned to me, they are incredibly young on defense. Yeah. From Mitchell, yes. Cooper DeGene, Nolan Smith, Jalen Carter, on and on and on. The way you get a young defense better is you limit the amount of time they have to play. Exposure. And, and, exactly. And to me, what Saquon's done independently of all that is he's been able for them to control both sides of the ball. But, I, I, but, I, 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 but their time make... of possession is less than it was last year. Yeah, I, I, it's I think not that's not true. I, I think that's the point, though. <laughs> the, the, the point is, the point is, Dan is right. The other point is, Mike is also right. (laughs) Dan is correct that many of the numbers are exactly the same offensively, but defensively this team has improved. And I believe that is why they aren't in the same place they were last year when they were 10-1. But what they look like offensively is totally different. Miles Sanders had a great career in Philadelphia. We watched DeAndre Swift have a career year Mm -hmm. in Philadelphia as a runner, but it wasn't this. No, It wasn't late in the game against the Washington Commanders. We're struggling to try to find explosive 
explosive plays, and boom, right off of the back, we get Saquon Barkley with two huge touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. That is the difference between this team and the team from last year, even with DeAndre Swift. And so, does Saquon Barkley win the MVP? No. no we know that so. that's not going to be a thing. Yeah. But his effect on this offense and the way they find success is totally different than last year or the year before when they went to the Super Bowl. And quickly, just the eye test tells you the quarterback doesn't look the same either. No, right? Is that so because much he has Saquon? Well, it, it's, it's part Saquon, but I believe it's health as well. The thing that Saquon has done for Jalen Hurts is he's alleviated some of the necessity to run. Last year, they needed him to run. Those plays were huge. They were reliant on them. Now they've become a luxury, and he's only adding those things above the X's and O's. It's the windows. Great runners always create space because the linebackers have to react because of the threat of the run. Yep.